Welcome back, 3800 Fiero fans. So it's been about three years since my last major project, and boy, have I got the lineup of projects coming up in this video. I've decided to put a lot more effort into my videos from here on out, so if you like what you see, please thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. This car is my daily driver in the summer times and just getting it running to a point it was fun and all but I want to get it to a point where I enjoy driving it. I want to reduce the vibrations, uh, make it comfortable, better looking, that sort of thing. Coming up I'm going to go over my top next couple of projects including replacing a fender, putting on some vents on the hood to vent the air, a new radiator that's a lot bigger, bushings, AC pulley delete, battery relocation kit, wheels and tires, replacing my front air dam, and engine mounts. I'm also getting my exhaust welded up and I'm adding two mufflers on the sides. And with the new exhaust, I'm also gonna add a new wideband oxygen sensor, or O2 sensor, and possibly take the next step and run this thing on E85. I've also got an order a higher flow fuel pump for moving to E85 and a blazer uh, brake master cylinder kit some higher quality speakers, and all of the 1988 steering components, a console tray, exhaust tip shields, some seals for the radiator, a headlight rebuild kit, door shields, and some door sound insulation, a splash shield in the rear, ashtray spring, a seat recline handle, headlight adjustment kit, and the weather strip for my trunk. Starting with the fender, I'm just going to replace the whole fender after this thing cracked. Now, I already have a replacement of the fender detailed in my vertical door video, so go check that out. Trans Am vent. These guys will go on the hood. And they're gonna look something like that. The car out of the factory never went more than 115 miles an hour, and if it goes faster than that, air pressure builds up underneath the poorly designed bumper, and it will uh, pop the headlight covers up at those speeds. Now those headlight covers could snap off and something worse could happen. Depending on how fast you're going, you could lose control of the front tires as they're no longer on the ground being lifted up. So what these vents do is they vent the air that's building up and the pressure underneath the hood so that it'll suck the nose of the car back onto the ground. Putting a vent in the hood will also help suck some more air through the radiator because the hole will be right around there. These particular vents were actually showcased on a uh, purple car that was on a magazine cover a few times. Next, Champion makes this radiator. I think it's originally designed for Chevy trucks, but it has an extra core in it for a total of three row cores. Now I do have some issues on the highway with cooling uh, with 3800 supercharged engine in there. Running about 85 degrees for too long on the highways, the engine will probably creep up to around 220 to 230 degrees after a while. I've got a 180 degree thermostat in here. So obviously the radiator is not doing its job and rejecting enough heat. So the answer is put a bigger radiator. Next is bushings. These guys were all shot. Now I've got an 88. Uh, there's a total of 12 bushings in the rear because you've got three control arms on each side. Uh, and then you've got a total of eight in the front because you've got four A arms and each have two bushings a piece. Next is an AC pulley delete. So the air compressor, if you turn them, they actually do have quite a bit of resistance. And if you want the most power out of your car, removing any sort of rotating mass from your system is probably going to be the most effective way to pick up power. So they sell these little pulley delete kits online. Now, if I were to not do that, I do have the equipment to install AC. Now this is, these are all the, uh, O-rings that you would need. You want to get the green hydrogenated nitrile seal. And this is the conversion orifice tube for going from the old Freon to the R134A stuff. Other than that, in recharging your AC system, just you need a hose, which I cover in a previous video. And don't forget to buy a new AC dryer while you're at it. Next, I have a V8 Archie fiberglass battery relocation kit. This will remove the battery 
from the trunk on the passenger side and put it up underneath the hood. It might also be beneficial for weight distribution when your nose is up in the air when you're going 115 miles an hour. Next is wheels and tires. Now right now I have four 15 inch by seven inch rims all the way around the car. Now the Fiero in 88 came with 15 inch by six inch rims on the front and 15 inch by sevens in the rear. I decided that I wanted some wider tires a long time ago, but I regret it a little bit as they stick out quite a ways. So I picked me up some regular 15 by sixes and we're gonna put those on, hopefully save some weight and again, remove rotating mass from the system. Now I'm also gonna get a skinnier tire up front. Currently I'm running 215s up front, which they're actually supposed to be 205s from the factory. So I'm hopefully gonna shoot for a lightweight skinny front tire, maybe around the 195 range to try to trim some more rotating mass and save some power. As for the rear, I think I'm gonna get some Mickey Thompson 235 R15s. Now factory is 215s, so I'm gonna get, gain an extra two centimeters of width. And last, my old air dam came off when I ran over something a long time ago, and so I'm gonna put an air dam back on here. This sits underneath the front bumper, and it actually diverts air into the radiator. Now, it doesn't do that great of a job, but it's gonna help out with cooling at least a little bit. So last were the engine mounts, and I already have these in. I didn't do any recording. Now, those are a pain in the butt to get in. I decided to switch from polyurethane Rodney Dickman engine mounts over to a rubber, except for this guy. This is an adjustable dog bone here. This is extendable so that the engine can rest in a neutral spot and possibly not shake the rest of the car while it's just sitting there idling. So there's three engine mounts total on this car, plus the dog bone. The one is under here, kind of by the oil filter. If you have a bracket like mine, uh, that is rubber as well. I got all these parts from the Fiero store. I don't think they're the, the greatest, but there's not a lot of options out there anymore. I actually stripped out this one pretty bad. Now that was probably my own fault, but they are not the hardest steel on these studs that they've got. So to get the engine mounts out, what I did was I used this cherry picker here and I attached a chain to the hook and I screw some bolts through the chain. And I thread some bolts into the head. The heads have quite a few bolt holes on them that you can access. And depending on the engine mount, I would shift which holes I was using. So on, on, these, on these two engine mounts on this side of the engine, I'd use the holes on this side and the holes on that head over there to anchor to. Now when I was swapping out that engine mount, I used the holes on this side of the head and the holes on that side of the head. Also, you're going to need a pretty big crowbar to pry the engine which, whichever way it needs to go in order to get the studs through the holes on your bracket. Now since I was already doing bushings, I figured doing engine mounts would be a great idea. And why not get struts too? I installed some new bump stops and boots in my struts. Now you've got to get a spring compressor to compress this down. And once you take these three nuts off, this will drop out after having disconnected these bolts, of course. Once that drops out, you can grab the top of this with vice grips of some sort and make sure you get it good on there. And this is like a pretty big wrench, maybe like a 21 to get this nut off. Now this, this stud here on my Monroe struts for some reason is between a 10 and an 11 millimeter and it's not English either. So nothing that I put on there worked very good. So you just gotta use some vice grips to get it off. I'm also going to repaint this Mustang Fox body hood scoop. So hopefully it'll be running soon. I'm looking forward to this thing being more enjoyable to drive every day. And I will be making some videos of the progress that I make. So please like the video, uh, comment on what you want to see more detail about me doing in the future. And I'd appreciate if you subscribed and turned the bell notifications on for my next video.